理想だもんだその意志による導きはあ<笑>I like how everything is just. He's hyper focused on this, so it's just like, whoop, one ear out the other. I don't give a fuck about any of that. <laughs> Mustering up my courage, I asked Fez that question. I demanded. Uh, without changing her aloof expression, Fez gazed down at the die sword she was holding. Despite how gigantic the sword was, she seemed to be handling it with incredible ease. Maybe she just had an absurd level of physical strength or something. Oh, God damn it. We need to find it ourselves. Duh. Why is that? That you'll go on and on about all this random shit, yet you can't tell me the most crucial thing I need to know. Yeah, well, how, how am I going to do that? <laughs> well, how did you, did you just fucking stumble upon yours? Like, you don't know? Then how in the living fuck did you get the die sword you're holding in your hand right now? Maybe every, like, person, it, the way they get it is different, maybe? I don't know. Yep, see? We seen it. So, in other words, those without the power couldn't see them. But I could see it extremely clearly. But then, what did she mean by the power? Was she saying that I had, a, had supernatural powers? Like what the two fezes in front of me had? Uh huh. If Shogun and Yua were destroying my life because of it, then I didn't want this stupid bullshit power. But I still did want a die sword. Because it'd grant me salvation. Fez had said so. <laughs> Stuff like the greater will and the reason why Shibuya attracted young people made no difference to me. I didn't want some random power, nor did I want to be roped into all this bullshit in any way, shape, or form. But in order to escape the clutches of Shogun and Yua, I had to get my hands on a sword. I like how we're like at such a base level of understanding, whereas this, whereas she's like up here, like we're down here. She's like up here. We have all these, we have one little priority that we want, but there's so much more bullshit going on. <laughs> but Fez's answer was as ambiguous as every other goddamn thing she said. Biting my lip, I tried desperately to think of any way I could extract information from her. But as a person who was terrible at talking to 3D people, I couldn't think of anything that'd be effective at all. Great. The one, the, the time we need social skills. <laughs> I tried to pull back from my uh, bank of Ed okay situations. What? What? <laughs> Hold up. What? How would that help us? <laughs> but everything that came to mind was fairly unsettling, such as slipping her an aphrodisiac, or, uh, tying her up, or imprisoning her. Yeah, see? That's what I'm saying. That would have, this has nothing to do with anything. Man, I may or may not be extremely fucked up. Wow. Who would have thought? I like talking to you or just a fucking crazy person. <laughs> Ugh. Fez turned back to me, then slowly began to walk deeper into the tunnel. I I I know uh when she said that I realized that we still hadn't introduced ourselves to each other yet. 
Takumi. <laughs> oh my god. I couldn't see her Fez, ISA's, expression from where I was. Why was she laughing? I don't know. And you're just leaving? I say was moving farther and farther away. What? I fearfully turned my head to see what happened to the other I say she's probably gone. Only to find out that she had disappeared without trace. Thank God. I don't have to cover her up with the soccer wall, even though it's really unnecessary. Had she literally disappeared, or had she just walked out of the underpass? Naked? ISA had said that the other ISA was a delusion. Maybe that was the power of the die sword. I returned my gaze to the inside of the underpass, and right as I did, I saw that ISA was going up the other staircase, which was about 50 meters deeper into the tunnel. Do I follow? Eventually, her figure disappeared completely, and now, all that remained was the eerie silence of the underpass. I wasn't brave enough to yell after her. I was too exhausted to run after her, and I was so overwhelmed with the feeling that it wasn't worth the trouble. In the end, all I could do was return home, oh don't do that, as cautiously as I could, making sure not to be spotted by Yua or the police on the way. What, did you not think they wouldn't be at your home right now? Oh my god, I guess not, even though... <laughs> well, didn't they say to surround his home? <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. Felt like it had been ages since I last seen my base, but in reality it had only been half a day. That's still too much for us. Why do I feel weirdly safe here, but also kind of unsettled here at the same time? I'd left my computer on, leaving my Seraton screensaver to cast a pale light together with her smile across the dark room. I locked the door tightly from the inside and threw myself onto the sofa. When I closed my eyes, I couldn't help but remember everything that happened today. I couldn't believe the police thought I was the culprit. They had it all wrong. There was absolutely no way I could have killed all those people. In fa investigate like you actually give a shit. This isn't a game. <laughs> Otaku freaks like myself were ostracized by society, so they must have thought they could just pin the crime on one of us and the public wouldn't even bat an eye. <laughs> yeah, and they chose the craziest one. <laughs> They couldn't exactly catch the real culprit, so they wanted to save face by using me as a scapegoat. All this rationalization, I'm telling you. Damn it. What can I do to clear my name? Okay. Uh, uh, the scene at Hat Cafe flashed before my eyes, sending a chill down my spine. There existed someone that was even more terrifying than the police. You, uh, my enemy. I know she seems like our enemy now, but I feel like she's like actually maybe a kind of sort of actively trying to help us. <sighs> you know, I had been so unbelievably relieved that I hadn't heard anything from her recently. I'd been growing more and more confident that she'd never contact me again. <laughs> but today I'd realized that I'd been mistaken. Yep, see? In order to oppose all of them, I needed a die sword. I wonder how many people get triggered every time I say die sword. I glanced at the cheap sword that was leaning against my PC desk. It was fake. I say said had said that only people with the power can see them. The day I bought my sword, Nanami had seen me with it. And unlike I say and Senna swords, it didn't glow. What if Nanami does have the power too? You don't know. <laughs> Where would a real one be? I had to get my hands on one as soon as possible. If I didn't, I was doomed. Getting wrapped up in something this insane? It sucked so much! What anybody would- oh. D.I.D. Oh. No, that's not true. That's impossible! Alright, Luke, calm down. Multiple personality disorders are supposed to be rare in Japan. You've seen, you've been way too, watching way too many goddamn movies, Yua. <laughs> Specifically, I don't have multiple personalities. There's no proof of that at all. Yeah, of course, there's no, no proof. <laughs> we don't... 
I was going to say, we don't talk about that, but hey. <laughs> but that chat log is consistent with what Yua had told me. <laughs> but there's no proof that I don't have multiple personalities. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, he's gone. Like, we didn't, it, it's... <laughs> But that very doctor, Dr. Takshina, is now gone for some unknown reason. <laughs> God, I, but I don't actually know myself. I felt chills on the nape of my neck. The usual presence, someone was watching me, the unknown gaze. It's God. Time to fight God ourselves. Uh, whose eyes are those eyes? No, I don't like when I see it. <laughs> it's all trying to like trick your brain into believing a thing that is obviously not true. But does Shogun truly exist? Are you sure he isn't just a delusion? <laughs> If there's one thing in this world that you are not, it is normal. <laughs> I clutched my head and shouted out to no one in particular. But what I got in reply was... Oh, I was like, oh, that sound too happy. <laughs> Sarah? I sluggishly made my way over to the computer and checked my email. Oh no, I don't want to see it. You know, I have an argument for your multiple personality disorder. It's the fact that I'm inside you right now and I'm like talking to you. Like, it's very weird. <laughs> the sender was grim. Found something interesting was the subject line. It was probably just bait and the contents of the email were meant to fuck with me. Okay, he hasn't been doing that lately. I didn't have the energy to deal with him personally right now, so I stuck to just reading the email. All right, let's see what we got. You haven't joined the tab room. You haven't been on ESL either. <laughs> Listen, I've been busy, so I had no choice but to email you. Oh, no. I would have told you to watch this vid because it's seriously fucked. I know what you're thinking. It's probably just Grim fucking with me, but no. It was recorded by the new gen perp. Oh, the net's going absolutely insane over it. Hurry up and watch before you miss the hype. Uh, shake my head. Uh, waving emoji. A video that was recorded by the new gen culprit. My fingertips on the mouse began to tremble. I couldn't take my eyes off the email. Oh, God. Did that mean the killer was in the video? That shit's going to get taken down off YouTube. I'm telling you. Who was it? No. Was it me? That would be freak. I'd be freaking myself out right now, too. I both wanted to see it, but didn't at the same time. That, that, that this was the proof. Proof that I wasn't the killer, or proof that I was the killer. Which one would it be? I didn't know. It was a gamble. Feeling my heart begin to beat faster and faster. I moved the mouse cursor and hovered over the link. But I couldn't work the courage to click the URL. Damn it. We are so close, yet so far. <laughs> See, she even says she wants to help us, but like, <laughs> you know, she's, we're like, she's the enemy, obviously, because it's, you know, shut up, don't treat me like a criminal, don't act like you feel sorry for me, I didn't do it, you're the one on the criminal side, Yua, sure, an intense fit of rage, or in an intense fit of rage, I clicked on the URL, oh, here he goes, oh, gee, oh, oh. I, it was a YouTube video. It, the word loading appeared on the the video window. All right, let's just relax um, and calm down. In reality, it only took about 10 seconds for the video to load, but those 10 seconds felt like an eternity to me. It's a dive, group dive, video recording, madness in Shibuya, group dive. So, oh, I see it. It's right there. <laughs> Whose eyes are those? 
Eventually, it's uh, it finished loading and the video started to play. Okay, let's take a look. See, oh, oh, I don't like this. It was a very video of a very dark place. Are they in hysterics? Or are they laughing, having a good time, crying? I can't really tell. The background was pitch black. Maybe it was indoors. So this was the um, this was the group suicide. Yes, because there's I mean there's multiples of them. I leaned my head in close to the monitor, trying my best to parse the information on the screen. It was dark and therefore hard to see, but there were several men and women there. They were all making a ton of noise. Maybe it was because the bitrate was too low, or maybe because the people in the video were too distraught, but I couldn't make out a single thing they were saying. Okay, they're distraught. Every once in a while, whenever someone screamed violently, the sound would clip horribly. After watching for a bit longer, I was able to determine that there were five people in the video. If you included the cameraman, it would be six. The cameraman didn't enter the frame at all. Because of how dark it was, the faces of the five people were just barely visible. As though to comfort each other, they were caressing each other's heads, patting each other's shoulders, and hugging. Yeah, they are. Ah, uh, yeah, see? Okay, you can tell just based on their, uh how they are bodily fun moving. I could also hear the high-pitched sobbing of a girl, likely overcome with emotion. No, that's me. <laughs> it was definitely bizarre, but how did this video have any connection to new gen? Was the person filming this really the new gen culprit? At the very least, I knew I, I, knew I had no memory of recording something like this. You have no memory of nothing! So, like, they're all gathered up there. And then, after a short while, the camera, or rather the person holding the camera, began to slowly move forward. The five subjects, who were about five meters away from the cameraman, gradually grew larger and larger. The picture was fairly grainy. Maybe the original image data was re-encoded at an extremely low bitrate in order to reduce its size. A modern video camera should have a night vision function, so I wondered why the cameraman hadn't made use of it to make it scarier. Duh. Could it have been an older camera? As soon as I thought that, the camera suddenly panned to the left and then to the right, showing the surrounding scenery. What I had initially thought was just the pitch black darkness of a room was actually the night sky. In other words, the video had been recorded outdoors. As for the reason why there wasn't a single building or anything, it was because the video had been taken on the roof of a skyscraper. Yup. The five people were on the edge of the roof of a very tall building. Right behind them was the ledge, and right below that ledge was the glittering nightscape of Shibuya that could all only be seen at high altitudes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Finally, I understood. I finally understood what this video was. I finally understood why it had been, it had to, it, it was said to have been recorded by the new gen culprit. Shoot up, David. Yup. See, that shit's fucked up. A locked room mystery in which a group of five men and women jumped from the roof of Cornelius Tower. The sole fact that remained unclear about new gen was whether or not this specific incident was a murder case or a group suicide. And, and if this video was of the five people who jumped to their deaths, then that would mean that there had been a sixth person at the scene when the incident occurred. The five people shown in the video hadn't just been making noise for the sake of it. They were all slumped down on the ground, crying and shouting as if all huddled to as they huddled together. They all refused to give up, despite the fact that they were fated to die soon. One was shaking their head in denial as they cried. One was clutching their, their, their hair tightly as they fell to their knees, their shoulders heaving with each sob. One was pleading with the cameraman as they sobbed, asking why they were doing this. One had already gone mad and was laughing as tears streamed down his face. It was... A rabid, violent desire to stay alive. A fervent, intense plea to not die. Oh, come on, there's five of you and one of him. Get him. 
And if it is us, well, we're easy to take out. We have muscle atrophy. Uh, not <laughs> Disconsolate indignation that screamed, why is this happening to us? Innumerable raw emotions swirled around the group. Yet, in a bizarre juxtaposition, the cameraman's voice was never once heard. The cameraman was eerily calm. Zamero. Zamero. Dude, I would not be like, keep playing this video. I would just have skipped around. <laughs> I would not want to keep listening to this. No matter how much I pleaded with the footage that had been taken nearly a month ago, nothing was going to change. So was so this was literally just uploaded. That's fucked. I knew full well that it was meaningless, but I subconsciously screamed at the monitor all the same. Oh, don't keep zooming in. Stop it. I don't want to be. Uh. With no possible way for my words to reach them, the camera, the cameraman was holding on to moved even closer to the five people. Terrified, the five of them all tried to crawl away to get away from the camera, but they couldn't. Right behind them was the very edge of the helipad. There was no guardrail of any kind. The five of them had nowhere to go. If they moved back even a little bit farther, they would fall. Refusing to heed the five's pleas for their lives, the cameraman continued to focus solely on filming, as if to agitate the five all the more. He had driven them completely to the edge, to the point where they took no further action at all. And then... Oh, now it's unsettling. Then, without any sort of cue, nor any form of signaling one another, the five people who had been crying out in grief suddenly fell silent. Then, they all stood up. The wind on the rooftop of the Cornelius Tower was powerful. Beckoned by the wind, the five of them nearly staggered. If there was even the slightest misstep, they would fall. As if in preparation for such a thing, the five men and women all joined hands, seemingly in resignation. They grasped each other's hands tightly. It's like either they had like the sudden realization there was no way out, so they decided to make their own way out, or like it was like some switch had flipped and it was like, do this now, you know, silence. It seemed to me that even the sound of the wind whipping violently through the air had stopped. All I could hear was the sound of cars driving along Shuto Expressway at the foot of the building. Even then, the cameraman did not make a single move. And then, a single person among the five whispered, Oh, God. What are they whispering? Oh, God. Oh, God. I froze in front of the monitor, feeling as though my heart had been strangled by an ice cold hand. Just <laughs> smashes the fucking computer. Dude, wasn't this supposed to be the first new gen case? That's what I'm th that's what I'm saying. Whose eyes are those eyes had been the dying message from the vampire case, and the one came forth, and that one came forth. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. <laughs> Paying no mind to the screaming inside my head, the video continued to play. Hand in hand, the five men and women slowly stepped out into the empty air, almost as if there was a path laid out before them. And then, just like that, the five fell into the nightscape of the big city. I bit my lip and covered my eyes. And then... Yeah. Ah, yeah. That's literally what happened. Is that it? Is the zen right there? Like, we don't get anything more after that? The group dive hadn't been a mass suicide. It, too, was a murder case. The culprit had been there when it happened. It was like they just knew they couldn't fight back you know despite I, I mean I don't and as for who'd filmed the video I knew who it was <sighs> mixed with the sound of the strong wind on the rooftop 
mixed in with the sounds of the five people crying out in grief, mixed in with the blaring horns from Shuto Expressway below, I was certain that I'd heard one particular faint sound. It was the sound of creaking steel, a sound that can only be heard when the cameraman was moving forward. Ah, the sound of a wheelchair. Maybe I didn't hear it just because of the video was so fucking loud. <laughs> wow, I can't imagine who Shogun may or may not be in the end. <sighs> Delusion. Great. <laughs> want no, I don't want any news. <laughs> To no one's surprise, the leaked video of the group dive exploded. Grimm had told me that the entire internet was going insane, and lo and behold, he wasn't lying. A huge chunk of that channel was now convinced that all four new gen murders had been committed by the same person. Oh, let's see what we got here. Uh, names. Uh, look at the, the, to the guy who'd upped it on is the perp. You don't know that. Okay, I'll report that. Oh, my God. I had to no, don't look, lol. Smoke wheat every day. Oh, Jesus. Um, also, wheat's first appearance was at the vampire game, so it couldn't possibly be the group dive. Saw the video, but it looks fake as shit. It's always those people that just, they can't believe anything. The same dude that all the new gen murder who's on. Uh, stop with the fu Don't even do the emojis. You know, you piece of shit. I'm coming after you, total dumb fuck. Um. Now the tower in that vid's actually just two meters tall and there's a trampoline or something down below. Agreed. That phrase keeps being a trend. There will keep being more mur- No. <sighs> I live in Shibuya. 131QQ. Obligatory. Don't look. Top of the charts. It's so brutal. Don't look, guys. Anything on the perp behind wheat yet? The news on TV was just as erratic. Like, uh, uh, uh like one of 40 had said. Every available station, save for TOTV, had been interrupted by the breaking news where they'd played the leak video on loop. Don't play it on loop! <laughs> the broadcast had lasted for about an hour. It was pretty shocking to see that the footage had actually been, re uh, been broadcast across the entire country. Of course, all the stations uh, censored the part where they dived off the building at the end, but it was still extremely impactful. The opinions of those on TV were more or less the exact same as everyone's in online. They all attributed the four new gen cases to the same culprit. Then again, that wasn't really much of a surprise. They'd finally found a common denominator between them, after all. <sighs> Whose eyes are those eyes? See, the fact is, it's a phrase that only we know... Yet, yeah, it's all started at the start with the first case, which is, which were under the belief that was caused by Shogun. And I still, I still think in a weird, crazy way that Shogun is us, but I don't really know how I would go about explaining that. It's just some weird gut feeling I have in my well, in my goopy guts. I don't know. It's... It had become a popular phrase all throughout Shibuya. The phrase had first been shown to the world when the details behind the fourth case, the vampire, were shared. People then learned that the victims of the group dive had said it as well, even though it occurred a month before the vampire case. In the four incidents that occurred so far, it had been used in both the first and the last. It had to mean something. It made the theory that a single person was behind the murders all the more probable. The police then held a press conference stating that they intended to identify the person who posted the video as soon as they could. The number of politicians 
committed to th- that the actions of the culprit were completely deplorable and they needed to be apprehended immediately. Please. The YouTube video had been removed by a moderator less than three hours after it was uploaded. By, but by then, it was too late. See, that shit gets taken down. At Channel had already gotten their hands on it, and from there, nothing could have stopped it from being re-uploaded and spreading like wildfire. And then, just before midnight, the following facts had been revealed through a police statement. Oh, police, uh, the group dive video was uploaded from a computer located in Shibuya Manga Cafe. That cafe. <laughs> it was uploaded from a specific room in the facility room number 37, the room we always use. <sighs> and all well, that lines up even further with you, uh. God damn it. <laughs> Talk to me. Listen, okay, I feel like we turn ourselves in, okay, and then from there, well, if no, nothing crazy happens, then we'll know for sure it was us. I sat paralyzed in my seat, my head hanging low as I hugged myself tightly. I need Remy support. <laughs> I need, I, you know what, fuck it, I need bro support too. Without realizing it, I had started eavesdropping. I was becoming hypersensitive to the voices coming from my surroundings. I overheard a lot of conversations, and unsurprisingly, the group dive video was the topic on everyone's minds. Some girls were even jokingly saying to each other, Whose eyes are those eyes? I bet you don't even say that shit! Not in my presence! I bit my lip and let my gaze wander onto the surface of my desk. <laughs> that video was evidence. Evidence that Shogun actually existed. Evidence that I hadn't killed anyone. Dude. It's all pointing to us. Uh, it proved that I didn't have multiple personalities. That the old looking man in the wheelchair was the new gen killer. That, what if it's us? What if we're the old man in the wheelchair? <laughs> but why would Shogun even upload it? Cause, cause we're crazy. <laughs> I'm like convinced <laughs> why would he hint at himself being the killer when the culprits identity had been shrouded in mystery so far Only two explanations made sense to me one Shogun was showing off by killing people because it amused him Which was pretty likely considering that time he'd appeared in front of me or He was trying to provoke me if he really is like a, a, one of our many perhaps multiple personalities <laughs> we're just like fucking fighting ourselves <laughs> for some reason Shogun and his underling Yua stop with the Yua underling we're doing everything we're doing everything in their power to fuck with me I didn't know the reason why I just knew that they were trying to frame me as the new gen culprit <laughs> at this point even the police were probably suspicious of me Shogun was trying to corner me even like kind of sounds like us. In, in like, if you like chain, like you know, if he, he has like a little quieter, you know, softer voice, and it's insane. Uh, oh, we already did that. That's our first thing we do. When he'd appeared in front of me, that's what he'd said. It felt like he'd been trying to intimidate me and he was basically saying, I'm gonna kill you too, don't you dare run away. And now he totally blindsided me by uploading that video and making sure that it spread all throughout Japan. Uh, there was no doubt that Shogun had moved his plan to the next phase. I'd been naive to think that I wasn't being targeted anymore. If anything, it'd be more accurate to say that his plotting against me had moved from passive to active. It was now finally in full swing. I was terrified, especially of that video. Shogun had killed five high schoolers without even lifting a finger, despite being even worse off physically than me. If all the new gen cases were actually his doing, then all those other gruesome murders, the man-child, the crucifixion, the vampire, had all been enacted by that very same frail body. 
Or maybe, maybe you had helped them out. God, you, you, you. In any case, I didn't have any faith that I'd be able to defend myself against people who'd commit such horrible atrocities. Just thinking of that sent chills down my spine. Chills that accompanied with the red-hot anger I was feeling. Why was I being targeted? Why did I deserve- What did I do to deserve it? And it was also that message. Whose eyes are those eyes? If I wasn't careful, I would start trembling uncontrollably. To keep that under control, I had to keep my body from relaxing. I had always been aware of my surroundings, or had to be, you know, and ready to, to bolt the second I sent someone approaching. <laughs> I didn't know when Shogun or Yua would show themselves again. Hell, I had no guarantees that Yua was Shogun's only underling. Maybe even my classmates were under his influence. Their laughter and idle chatter acting as a mere camouflage until just the right moment. I had to find a way for, to, to parry surprise attacks like the one in At Cafe yesterday. If I didn't, I'd be killed next time for sure. I don't know if we have that, the capacity to do that. <laughs> I needed to get a die sword ASAP. The only way out of this was to get a die sword. I'd internalized what ISA and Senna had said, and I'd searched online about it, and it all had me convinced. Getting my hands on a die sword would save me. The night before, I desperately tried to gather information on die swords while keeping an eye on the new gen shitstorm. But my research barely bore any results. <laughs> oh god, calm down. What the shit? I cradled my head, tearing at my greasy hair. Ugh. How was I supposed to find a die sword? How do? <laughs> I wish we had, like, a hint, like... Like, that's not even a method, that's just telling me I need to find it. <laughs> I say it said that, but that was bare. that was barely even a hint. That wasn't a hint! My thoughts weighed heavily on me. I was starting to freak out. My heart was steadily getting crushed by anxiety. Oh, Jesus, I needed to hurry. Hurry to find a die sword. Whatever it took, I had... had to and to find one. If I didn't, I'd be done for. Be uh, before becoming the new new gen's next victim, I had to find one. I but I I didn't need to find out how. I had no clue how you were supposed to get one. I needed some kind of hint, something, anything. I had to figure it out fast, or I'd lose my chance of finding it. Was I even capable of finding one? There's no time to be at school. He just runs. It was my own life for graduating. I didn't need to debate which one was more important. No, but our chart! <laughs> and yet, why was I... Why, 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 oh... Oh, sensing someone approaching me, I quickly raised my head and braced myself for head-to-car contact help! Oh. 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 Uh, you know, Remy, before you were scary. Because I thought you were a demon. But now, your presence makes me feel better. In a strange way. Remy was standing there, blinking repeatedly as if she'd been stunned by my sudden movement. I made you jump? Stop scaring me like that. All the stress in my body released at once, and I crumpled on top of my desk with a big sigh. Doku, he is far from that. Uh, fulfilling her usual quota, Remy peered into my face. I hurriedly lowered my eyes. Dude, he is lost. <laughs> was Remy with me or against me? An ally or an enemy? I, you know what? I'm gonna say she's an ally. <laughs> After she'd saved me, I'd grown a lot less wary of her. But there's still a ton of unanswered questions I had yet to figure out. Like why she'd been covered in blood at the scene of the crucifixion. I think that was all just our crazy brain mind. <laughs> From everything we know. Or how we were supposed to be such good friends, and that we'd been classmates since our first year, yet I had no recollection of it. Cut you're fucking insane! <laughs> Remy tilted her head slightly, a worried expression on her face. <laughs> I turned away from her. I couldn't say it to her face. Oh, okay, bye. 
Oh, when the classes for the day finally ended, I felt every ounce of energy had been drained from my body. Even during class, all I'd done was remain on high alert, repeatedly scanning my surroundings. I hadn't slept since yesterday, but staying this vigilant kept me wide awake. <laughs> Despite looking crazy because we hadn't slept. The school day felt like an eternity, and the sheer amount of time I'd spent there sent me spiraling into a deep depression. Man, anyone that goes to school. Why is it that the way we perceive time changes depending on our mood? Some say that time flows at a constant rate, but that might act not actually be true. The speed of time changes uh, uh, depending on each person's subjective perspective. I've always theorized that it's conspiracy to homogenize humanity's understanding of the concept of time by implementing units like seconds and hours. Also, they can deceive people into forgetting the perception of time that varies from person to person. He, the more I spend with him, the more crazy he seems. <laughs> wow, who would have thought? And building off that theory, if the length of time is dependent on each person's perception, then conversely, doesn't that mean the flow of time can be controlled at will? As I thought about that, I remembered Senna talking about controlling other people's wills. Ah, now time, and conversely, I d eh. <laughs> <laughs> Video data from a camera is converted into electric signals that are sent directly to the brain, causing the person to observe that sequence of images. Conversely, that would mean converting the images that a person observes into electrical signals, then sending them to equipment that can render video. The aforementioned equipment didn't have to be a video camera either. For example, what would happen if you con connected a person to a hard disk recorder? then showed them recordings of someone's vacation. What if instead of real life recordings, you showed them anime? Technically, anime's 2D and therefore delusionary, but people who are blind from birth have never seen anything from the 3D world, so if they were shown an anime and told this is how the world is, then they would believe that the 2D world is reality, right? I mean, if they hadn't seen anything before, yeah. To that person, the delusion would be their reality. A delusion perceived as reality. Jesus Christ. Nope. I'm go we're going we're going hard bad on this one. <laughs> Here's another example. If person A sent an image from their brain to a hard disk recorder that processed it and transmitted the image to person B's brain, then person A's delusion would become person B's reality. Delusion becoming reality. In theory, it was possible. Oh, it was on the main screen of the game. Holy shit, I was a genius, Lamau. And now we're stupid. Great. I was over the moon by how brilliant my theory was. Maybe that was how I'd acquire the die sword. ISA had said they had something to do with delusions, hadn't she? All right, I should hurry up and go home so I can look it up. Give me, give me to my bad delusion, whatever, maybe, maybe yeah, yeah, give me the wibbly wobbly. <laughs> We're going bad on this one. <laughs> I left the classroom and, wait, is it, it's not wibbly wobbly. Fuck. I left the classroom and started heading toward the school entrance. But partway there, I changed my mind and instead turned and headed toward the building where the first year classrooms were located. Figured it might be better to avoid the entrance I usually took. I couldn't rule out the possibility that Shogun and Yua were lying in wait to ambush me. So I opted to leave using a different route. I made my way to the first year building via the breezeway. The final bell had already rung a little while ago. So while the students on cleaning duty or doing club shit were still around, basically everyone who opted to go straight home already had. School always felt somewhat lonely or wistful after the final bell rang. No matter where I went, it always felt that way. Whether they were ancient buildings made out of wood or newer structures like Suime. Well, not that I ever set foot in any wooden school buildings in anything other than Edo Gay. Regardless, the school's interior was shimmering with a thick veil of silence. I walked quiet quickly down the hall, surrounded by that silence, trying my best to keep my footsteps as quiet as possible. <gasps> 
Oh no, I don't like why the, 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 the wheelchair, the setting sun shining through the windows warmed me. Oh god, typically I kept my head low while I walked, but since there weren't any other students, I opted to keep my eyes focused on what was ahead of me. This allowed me to <laughs> the chance to survey my environment, ensuring there were no suspicious figures lurking about. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, you should probably listen to, like, crane your ears. I heard something. A sound. What was that? I feel like I've heard it before. Immediately after I heard it, I saw something cross the hallway of the first year building in front of me. Oh, it was an empty wheelchair. Ah! The video of the group dive I'd watched yesterday resurfaced in my mind. A, a chill ran down my spine and I froze. The wheelchair finished crossing the hallway and then it disappeared from sight. Nope. Turn around. We're going back. <laughs> Dude, when you see an empty wheelchair moving by itself, just going across, nope, fuck that, I'm done, leave, leave. Oh my Jesus. Okay, well, it fell down the stairs. And right after it did, I heard an insanely loud sound. That was, that hurt my ears. <laughs> Silence settled back on the campus. I took a second to catch my breath, and then I looked in the direction where the sound had come from. What was that just now? Why was there a wheelchair in the school? Not to mention one with nobody sitting in it. The crash I'd heard at the end was probably the sound of the wheelchair falling down the stairs. With the noise it made, it must have taken a fair deal of damage. Wouldn't surprise me if it had been rendered practically unusable. I quickly looked around me. Rather than being uh, calming, the silence only made me f my, my fear skyrocket. I at last knew that I couldn't see anyone moving from my current position. However, I felt a gaze. No! Don't look at me. Oh, God. Shogun had come here to school? Why had he come here? Was it to meet with Yua? Was it to meet with me? I took a step back. I nearly toppled over. However, I somehow managed to keep my balance. I was thoroughly creeped out. Dude, we're gonna have a mental breakdown. Like, I, I, like, I mean, we've had several. I mean, the worst, it's gonna be so bad this time. Was he trying to harass me? Why wasn't he showing his face? It would have been so much more bearable if he just showed himself. <coughs> oh, he is gonna puke. Yep, I was hit with an intense wave of nausea. I wanted to get out of here as soon as possible. Covering my mouth, I moved back to where I'd come from. Yup, nope, get back, leave. I bolted down the stairs and out the building. I ran through the courtyard with no real destination in mind until I could no longer hold back the urge to vomit. Oh, well, I, the second I fell to my knees, the entire contents of my stomach began spilling out. Ooh, oh. <coughs> the sh fucking sh stressed nausea. Dude, throwing up is one of the worst feelings ever, at least in my opinion. The stomach acid made my stuff, my throat burn. My vision blurred from tears. It was hard to breathe. The aftertaste was absolutely vile. It must have been <laughs> way more max than I thought it was, or that I thought I was. <laughs> it might, might, might have been because I pulled the, the all-nighter. I pulled. Oh, why are we having a CG of him just throwing up? As I wiped the corners of my mouth, I looked all around me restlessly, but I couldn't see a soul. However, the shadowy corners of the blind spots I'd never usually paid attention to had become terrifying to me. I began to think that Yua and Shogun might be hiding in them. The second my brain came up with that, I could no longer take a single step. Someone save me. I wanted to cry. I felt nauseous all over again. Oh, someone's gonna show up. I see they, there's a... There's enough on space on the CG to someone help us. I didn't end up vomiting, but I dry heaved several times. The pain made me cry even harder. I was nearly sobbing at this point. Oh, I feel bad for the boy. But then suddenly someone's hand began to gently rub my back. It's Shogun. Hey there, buddy. I'm just... <laughs> Terrified, I turned around. Is, is it... Oh. oh, thank God. Remy was there. 
I wasn't being condemned for feeling this way. No, her words were a tender affirmation. I believe. She didn't even so much as grimace at the smell of my vomit. She didn't show any signs of disdain when she saw my face covered in tears and snot. Nor when she saw the vomit still clinging to the corners of my mouth. She just simply gave me a gentle smile, reassuring me that it would be all be okay. Yay! She drew closer to me. She continued rubbing my back gently. Why was it that before and even now, every time I thought I needed to be saved, Remy was would always heroically appear in front of me. Perhaps, in a weird way, she's our guardian angel. I mean, she's kind of, you know... <laughs> it would be a stark contrast from what we thought she was. Right now, Remy was right there. It reassured me. I felt better. Before I even realized what was happening, my true feelings began to pour out. Oh, God. Despite the fact that I never talked about myself. Uh, oh. True. Maybe that was why I bothered coming to school. Up until now, I'd always thought I'd be way off, way better off alone. Of course, even now, it was still terrifying to talk to others. I wasn't at all confident in my ability to actually talk to anyone, but... With Shogun and Yua trying to destroy my life, I've never been I'm so anxious, scared, and alone. I wanted someone to be there for me. They didn't even need to be nice to me. I just wanted someone to be present. Oh, this poor man. Aww. It's so sad. Yay! Those words held no ill will, no hesitation, no irresolution. <laughs> Her shy gaze suddenly moved up toward the sky. Her eyes were looking so far away. Just what could she be looking at in the sky, that sky? Okay. I like that. Yugata, <laughs> Oh, she's such a sweetheart. So <laughs> Wasn't that a uh, kind of almost like being in a relationship? You shut your goddamn mouth! I was stunned. She was completely serious. I could see it on her face. <laughs> Oh, because a flag I, if I'd ever seen one right <laughs> oh god because I love you Taku I could see it coming a mile away that'd be what she was gonna say right I'm gonna say no granted I had no clue why Remy would have fallen for me wait no this shit had to be bait uh, something similar had happened before with you. No, 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 no. You shut your goddamn mouth, all right? Let me be happy. With her, it had been all nothing more than deception, ending with me drowning in the depths of despair. So I couldn't get my hopes up. I had to prepare for the worst. It was possible that Remy too was an end. Is he? What? Oh, she suddenly saluted me. I was taken aback by the suddenness of it, and my mind shot to the possibility that she was about to reveal her true self. And yet, all I saw on Remy's face was that same bright, gentle smile. Yeah! Power friendship! Yeah! 
どうしてとか寂しいこと言わない。No、more sad, sad. 分かった<笑> Because we were friends. If she said, Because I love you, Taku, and the, this is how I'm gonna show it, it would have felt like my life had begun anew. But even if we'd be friends, that alone made me incredibly happy. Having someone being kind to me, having someone do things for me without expecting anything in return, I couldn't believe how happy it made me. It might have been the very first time I'd ever felt like that. And,、uh, but above all else, it made me realize that I wasn't alone. Ah! To me, Rimi's existence was my salvation. The nausea I'd felt earlier had subsided, and I was feeling much better. Hey, let's go. Rimi held out a vermilion handkerchief, it had a faint floral scent. I meekly accepted it, but I was hesitant to use it. <laughs> I felt guilty about it, but I ultimately decided I would accept her generosity. I wiped the vomit off that had stained the corners of my mouth with the handkerchief. It was the first time I'd ever received a present from a girl that wasn't a family member. I wasn't so sure about calling it a present, though. For someone who was so isolated and helpless, even a simple thing like this felt like an irreplaceable treasure to me. I felt so delighted, so relieved, that I nearly started to cry all over again. <laughs> Please. Her voice was so carefree. <laughs> Apparently, she already intended to make good on what she'd said before that she'd stay by my side. She's starting already! Not that I told her whether I wanted her to or not yet. You literally just. Went through that whole fucking thing. You sh <laughs> But it wasn't like I had any intention of saying no. Being alone terrified me. I didn't want to be alone. As I was now, I had no one to rely on but Remy. I mean, you have, you all, to be fair,、uh, you also kind of have your sister. Look, I'm just saying, okay? I'm gonna keep saying it. She's also on our side. You're just shit to her. It is what it is. But, you know what? We have emotional support, Remy. <laughs> I guess. Well, we're not stable, as, as he says, but hey. It's one step at a time, okay? <laughs> 